Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. We've been asked a lot when we were going to get this review out. It's for Too Many Bones by Chip Theory Games. We did an unboxing for it about a month ago, and we've gone through several revisions of the rules, and we wanted to make sure we got the game played right, right. before we brought a review to you guys. So here it is. We've played it multiple times now, David. We have. This is a role-playing game so to speak, using dice in a really unique universe in which each player is going to be taking on the role of a gear lock, which are these gnome-like creatures going out on single missions in order to defeat a single tyrant. Right. Not really. I mean, you can. I think you can play a campaign, but there, it's the game's really built so that you can play it as a one-night experience if you want to. Yeah. Just one scenario one night, a different scenario another night. Let's get this out of the way first. These components are ridiculous. Insane. They really, really are. I mean, I, I, can, I don't even know where to start. I mean, the, the player boards are not boards, first of all. They're yeah. basically mouse pad material that are really nice die cut for the dice. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you how perfectly these dice fit in here. Yeah. It's just nice. They, just snug enough so that they don't really move around, but right. not too snug. Right. That's just great. You, you have the chips, which represent uh, your health and the creatures. They all have this shiny... I don't know if they're, they're stickers on here, but they're really super high quality. Yeah. They're hefty. They feel like poker chips. You have these dice, which are very much like the Star Wars dice. They're all heat... Uh, Printed, glazed on these yeah printed right on there it's not a sticker on these things these are really really probably the highest quality dice you can imagine and if you can't see here there's a lot of them yeah there's, there's a, a ton of dice and this isn't even all of them no. we have the dice out for three players so each character has their own set of dice with each die representing their own powers and specific to them so these aren't really even just repeated dice uh-huh there are so many different dice in this game. It's nicely that it's nice that they have them all organized really well and numbered. But we have there's like it, three it, other, four it, other characters we don't even have represented on the and table then you right have now. The, the, the trays, the hold the right. dice. You have the cards, which aren't even cardboard. They're no. like a plastic material. They have this really nice texture on them that just makes them feel different than any other game out there. Yeah, these things, not only, like Jeremy said, are they plastic, almost like a like a wipeable placemat type of yeah. material. But they're smooth on the face, and they have a roughness to the back of them. Yeah. These things you'll never have. You'll never struggle taking a card off the top. They just they really yeah. just come right off the top. Yeah. And thank God it's not just about the components because the gameplay here is really really solid as well. Let's talk a little bit. It would be impossible for us to teach yeah. you guys how to play this game. I would most uh, closely compare it to Vast. Not in the way the game plays, no, not but the in the play. amount of investment of time that it takes to learn the game. Each of these characters that you play is so vastly different from one another. Each of the die that they use allows them to do abilities that are inherent to them. And they have to know how to play the game because each of the dice, each of these characters will have their own set of unique facings for the dice on here. Right. So you really have to read through this thing and understand a character in order to play it. Yeah, this would be the kind of game that would be good. First of all, you have to have a fairly committed group. This is not a game you're going to bring out every week for a new group. Yeah. For sure. But... You're going to want to send home, maybe, your friends <laughs> with their character yeah. so that they can really study up. The, the core mechanics of the game are simple. pretty simple. Yeah. It's just you, you have to learn these characters. And not only not really even learn the characters so much as be able to learn how to reference this quickly. Yeah. Because if you're leveling up and you're going to, trying to choose a new die, you can look here and get a little information about what power it might do. Mm-hmm. But you really, in many cases, have to look at the die and investigate the faces and go... Oh, okay, I see what it does. And some of the characters are inherently more difficult to play than others. Uh, the one I've been playing the most is Patches, and you can see at the top of these player sheets, uh, which again are a plastic, really nice yeah. plastic material, it tells you a difficulty level on how hard it is to play. Patches is really simple. He's a, he's a, he's a medic, and he can go out there and heal people and provide people with buffs. But one of the players we played with was playing with Tink, Tink. who creates these bots. Yeah, basically has a bot out there as... as the, the real damage dealer, uh-huh. and he just kind of sits back in the back and lets the bots do all the work. But there's different bots, there's yeah. different attachments for the yeah. bots, and I have to say, the way these player boards work for yeah. each character can be completely different. Yeah, like a completely different style of feel. Yeah, um, Tink, for instance, has a die that goes right here in the middle at, at the beginning, and you actually it rotates almost like the hands of a clock that helps determine 
which of the ones surrounding it you can actually upgrade to, yeah, which is, is fascinating. That's impressive. basically all the attachments for his bot. It's it's super impressive. All right, let's talk about the game structure, how yeah. it works. So you're going to pick a tyrant that you want to defeat. Each of these tyrants comes with an inherent number of, uh, they're called baddies or monsters mm -hmm. in the game, that they will bring into the game. The baddies are represented by chips, and each of these chips are numbered 1, 5, or 20, depending upon how difficult they are. 20s obviously being the most difficult, 1s being uh, more of the pushover, right. low-level mobs. Um, you're going to have a day counter in here. You have to defeat the tyrant in a specific number of days, and it's different for each of the seven tyrants in the game. Uh, each day is represented by an encounter, and that's by a deck here that's randomly shuffled. You'll start with the same three special encounters for every single boss that you mm -hmm. fight because it kind of lets you go out of the gates of the main city. Right. Upgrade your character a little bit, and then the normal encounters are different. There's a stack of encounters, plus each boss will bring in their own special encounter. And you can actually add encounters through the course of the adventure, depending upon what you find in the game. Loot can lead to different avenues and be able to yeah, do specific Yeah, it's really things. cool. There's certain loot, and even I, I noticed last night my character even is tied to a certain one of those encounters, too. If I do something... Mm -hmm it actually triggers one of those encounters that gets shuffled in. Interesting. So uh, then the uh, what you'll do is you'll do each of these special encounters. The encounters have two sides to them. Our, uh, one is a story flavor, and the other side is two options in which the group gets to decide which of the two options they wish to do for that particular day. Remember, each of these cards is a day, and you have to beat the boss in a certain number of days. So once the players pick one of these two encounters, they have to do it. Sometimes they're fights against the monsters. Most of the time. Yeah. But then sometimes, like we find out, yeah. it's, it's nothing at all. Yeah, nothing at all. Or you could get loot. Loot goes off to your side and can be used during adventure. Some loot is permanent. Some is expendable and will go back into the deck once it's been used. Uh, some of them give you training. This is the most important yeah. portion of the game. Each of the characters has four inherent abilities. They have health, which represents you know, how much health hit they points. have, hit points. Uh, they have dexterity. Dexterity is two things. It allows you movement on the board, and plus it also allows you to roll an X number of dice. If you have five dexterity, you get to pick five dice to roll. If you have two dexterity, you only get to roll two right. dice for that combat. And that connects up in an interesting way with the attack and defense stat. Yes. So the attack stat determines how many attack dice you can roll mm -hmm. for an attack. Defense, obviously, how many defense dice you can roll. Right. So these tie back into dexterity. So if I have a two dexterity but a three attack, mm -hmm. it will make no sense because I'll never be able to roll three dice because my dexterity is only two. Right. So you have to make these decisions to try to... The dexterity is really important, mm -hmm. in my opinion. It's probably one of the core of those four that you really need to start boosting up. Yeah. And then you get those attack dice. But as we were saying, when you're spending upgrades, too, you can get dice down here that also do effectively attack or damage, maybe yeah. even defense, that don't count as, quote-unquote, attack or defense die. Right. So when you get training points, you're allowed to spend them in a variety of different ways. You can upgrade any one of those abilities that we just mentioned. When you're upgrading your attack or defense, you actually have to roll to see if you get it. Um, and the more attack or defense you have, the more dice you have to roll and the less chance right. that you could upgrade. But if you miss that upgrade, you can always do a free health or a free dexterity if you so wish. You can also upgrade your player board and add, introduce new dice into your skill sets. Two ways to do that. Either you can upgrade a place with a star. A star is like a beginning location mm -hmm. or a beginning dice to be able to do something. Or a place that it's connected by an arrow to one of those locations you've already previously upgraded. When you do that, you simply take the die out of your tray and you put it in that location. Now, that doesn't mean that it's yours to use immediately or you get that ability. No. You actually have to roll those in combat and use them or even expend them in order to do stuff. Right. It's just one more die you get to roll as part of that dexterity number that we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. So the more die you have and the higher the dexterity, the more options you have on your turn. That's right. Uh, now, if you encounter something instead, you have to actually face a specific number of baddie points uh, for that encounter. The baddie points are determined by the number of players sitting around the table and what day it is. So right. say, for instance, we're on the fourth day and there's four players. That's four times four equals 16 baddie points. So the, how you do that is you would take uh, the highest possible number, which is five in this case, times three plus a one chip. So you'd face three level five baddies and then one level one for a total of 16. Exactly. So the longer you're playing as a team... 
once you get to that point where that equation equals 20 or higher it's a tough boss that's when you're going to bring in a 20 point baddie and then the remainder points are made up of the fives and ones yes and there's even points in the game where you'll have more than it's available when you start a combat, only four creatures or baddies are allowed to be placed. Yeah. So you have a pool off to the side that once something is killed, it'll be introduced in the next round. We're not going to get into combat, but adjacency in combat. Combat's really fun. It's it's really unique. Combat's fun. It's fast. It's not yeah. overly complicated. There's no ridiculous line of sight or anything like no. that. Uh, it's... You know, and it doesn't look like your typical dungeon crawler because there's not miniatures all over the board. You've yeah. got your your chip with the health right underneath it, which is a genius yeah. mechanic for these sorts of games. Yep. But yeah, it's fun, it's fluid, and still very challenging. And strategic, too, yeah. because you have to be melee. Cu- there's melee and there's ranged. Range can shoot anywhere on the board. There's no line of sight, as you mentioned. But melee has to be perfectly adjacent. Orthogonally. There's orthogonally yeah. adjacent. So you have to be expending your dexter- dexterity to move adjacent to things. And then the monsters will move around according to either stronger cre- or stronger right. gear locks or uh, gear locks with less hit points on them and they'll yeah, attack has, specific it, things. It has some intelligent yet very simplistic AI basically built in for the, the enemies. Um, so anyway, there's combat as well. And you'll keep doing this round after round until the creatures are done and you'll keep moving from day to day to day until the, baddie, or to the tyrant is killed or not killed. All the tyrants come with their own special die which is inherent to them. They also come with their own special card that they do specific abilities. But the ones that we have fought, he actually has henchmen, and you have to kill all the bog henchmen before you can even do any damage to him, right. which creates some really weird synergy in the game, and it makes it extremely difficult. But it's cool, too, because of the variable aspect of once we've scored, I think it was six of those points in order to even try to attempt to fight him, mm-hmm. you can choose not to. Yeah. You can do another encounter, but just knowing that that's another day, yeah. and it makes the, you know, the encounters get harder and harder. So uh, we understand we're not going to give you guys all the rules, but let's talk, about, <laughs> let's talk about the pros and the cons. That's one of the things you just mentioned. I love that aspect that you can attack the baddie at any time once you've hit, hit a specific progress. Yeah. So if you wish to keep training and trying to find new encounters that allow you to upgrade your character, you can choose to go on those adventures, but not over uh, overreach and, and go beyond the days needed in order to, to it, kill him. Exactly. And I think, too, those decisions aren't overly complicated by the fact that since you are playing these as distinct scenarios... When you're making these choices, like if you've ever played a video game RPG and you're making these sorts of choices about how to spend your points, Mm -hmm. it's just the scenario that you're playing that night. Because the next scenario you play, you wash this. And half the fun, or more than half the fun, is building your character throughout the scenario. There is a remarkable sense of progression in this game. I'm not sure you felt that, but I definitely, when you're building up your character, you can feel them get stronger and stronger through the course of the game by adding all these new dice into it. Yeah, it it really is. This mechanic alone, I would love to see... I mean, I won't be surprised if someone tries to use similar mechanics with this dice and how the dice are used to level up characters for other games and to fuel other games, you know, more miniature-based games. I also love how wildly different all the characters are. My character is so vastly different than your abilities and so vastly different than Boomer, um, who basically every turn he's rolling dice in order to get components for grenades, and then he builds those grenades, and he lobs those grenades, and then he r- refreshes and repeats and, and does, that, and does it over and over. It's funny you said vastly, too, because yeah. that's what it has in common with vast, I think, yeah. is the character flavor is so significantly yeah. different from one another. And on the same in the same hand... There's a lot of learning that has to be done for each character. Yeah. Like, I might play Nugget, and it, once you play the game, you could probably play just about any other character, but you do have to learn those characters when you're playing because mm-hmm. it's a whole new set of skills. Yeah. There's seven different tyrants, and each of those tyrants introduces different types of baddies. There's six different types of baddies, and all of them have unique abilities in them. There is actually a cheat sheet here with... Uh, Almost 30 different unique abilities that all these things can have. And these abilities are cool, too. The way they've uh, woven these abilities into the mechanics of the game are genius. Because one of them that we, none of us like, is break. There's an (laughs) ability called break, and when you attack a, a, a creature or a baddie that has break, any of the standard attack dice you've used, mm-hmm. they get taken out of the that scenario. Yeah. Or that, uh, right. that encounter. That encounter, right. So you keep 
chipping away at this thing and it keeps breaking your weapons effectively so you have fewer attack dice so you're going to have to rely on, on your, your skills. other yeah. dice and skills to yeah. get past him yeah uh the battles are really strategic surprisingly so in this game i yeah, had no especially idea. since the board is so small you'd look at this board and think well how strategic can it be but it really is. Yeah. I mean, the abilities to buff characters, the abilities to surround characters, the abilities to pull in mobs to specific characters, it, it's it's unique. Yeah, and it uh, th- that reminds me, we played again last night with four of us playing, and it came down, we were fighting the uh, the final, the boss, or, yeah. Drellin. Drellin. Yeah. And two of us had died in the in that very scenario. early too very early i mean like just flat out died <laughs> on the one first shot, turn yeah. one died on the first <laughs> turn right and then it was jeremy and i left jeremy thankfully had that buffing ability so he was keeping me alive and i have uh, one of these dice we talked about exhausting earlier yeah certain of your dice when you roll them they're exhausted for that encounter yeah you don't get to use them again I have this long sword that doesn't exhaust, so it's, it's a brutal. significant impact on my ability to deal out damage. So I was dealing as much as like six, seven damage in some cases if I rolled well. Uh, the two negatives I would say: one, there's not really a built-in campaign to the game. I wish there was because it would give it more of that RPG flavor. However, I don't see how it could be done because some of these encounters are going to last you two to three hours on the harder bosses. Yeah, it's, so you're going to be progressing through this entire thing and, and getting most of your skills. But I don't see how that would repeat into a second unless they built that in with an after yeah, mechanic somehow. That's almost to me like a pro and a con. Yeah. Because I understand what you're saying, but I like it in that every time you play, mm-hmm. some people might go, oh, I don't keep my progress. That is the fun of this game yeah. is because I've played we've played a few times now yeah. and I've actually chosen different paths yeah. you know and used different skills and you know the third time I played used this dash skill which I thought at first wasn't going to be any good but you're able to move around significantly incredibly more incredibly yeah. on the table and you know in the late game when you find yourself far away from a creature and you're using you know two of your five dexterity or three of your five dexterity to move over yeah. extra movement really helps so the flavor of developing your character differently each turn mm-hmm. and then there's other characters we haven't even played yeah. and trying them on the same scenarios yeah. so there's a lot of game here which means the other portion is the learning curve uh, yeah you have to have a committed group that wants to play this game uh it, there's no way to introduce all of these mechanics to somebody, especially people who aren't gamers. No. Like they're, they're not going to be able to wrap their head around all these things and then read a two-sided sheet and try to figure out what they all mean. It's no, just, I, it's there too are people much to I game with who would they look at it not saying, play. No, not they would absolutely, it would be a hard no for, for a lot of people. But I think this game is developed and designed for those with those people in mind. I yeah. mean, we know a lot of people too. Gary, for instance, has a group who will would love this game. Yeah. You know, those players who will play some of those legacy games, some of those campaign games, even though this isn't a campaign game, to come back to this week after week would be a lot of fun. Yeah, the the dice driven mechanic in this is really unique. There's nothing out there really like it and it really draws you in. It, it gives a flavor of the universe that you're you're building up something unique to you. Uh, just through the use of dice. So. And uh, you know, one more thing, and there's so much to say about this game. We can go on and on, but we forgot to talk about there's loot and then there's trove loot, which yeah. adds like this little mini game yeah. into in between each encounter where you're actually rolling these, yet again, more dice, different dice, specifically to try to unlock the different tumblers. So there's levers and trips and different things that you have to unlock on these trove loots. Once you do, you will flip that over, and the trove loot's fantastic. Yeah. Oftentimes, have an, has an ongoing power that really enhances the and game. And you can also help other players if you if you don't have any trove loot in front of you, you can use your turn to help other players yeah. unlock their trove loot. Really unique mechanic, yeah. guys. Too many bones is definitely worth a look if you are into these little heavier uh, style games. Yep. Go check it out. It is called a dice-driven role-playing game by Chip Theory Games. Make sure you guys make comments below. If you have any questions for us, let us know. We can always ask the developer for you. Subscribe to us. Follow, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.